to order the July meeting of the Bloomington Board of Park Commissioners. And um, we could please, Kim, start with the roll call. Yes. Kathleen Mills. Here. Les Coyne. Here. Israel Herrera. Here. Ellen Rodkey. Here. Okay. All right, great. And um, we are obviously, once again, on Zoom, allowable by the um, governor's order that allows public meetings to be held virtually right now. So uh, we, we have the consent calendar that, thanks to Kim, we've all had for a few days to look over. So we have the minutes from the last meeting, um, claim submitted, non-reverting budget items, a budget amendment, sorry, a business report, and a little bit of a surplus items. So we have a motion to approve the consent calendar. So move. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Did we get everybody in there? Okay. Um, all right, motion is carried. Um, and now we move into the public hearings and appearances and the public comment period. So I'll pause here a minute, just see if we have anyone on the uh, Facebook Live or email who would like to share a comment. And if you're on Zoom, if you're interested in making a public comment, please use the raise your hand function or send me a message through chat. There are no comments yet on Facebook Live. Okay, thank you, Jim. And I, I don't see anyone's hands raised right now. Okay, all right. Um, so then um, I know we would like to move on to um, acknowledge Marsha Feldman and her many years of service to the Parks Department. Um, and is Marsha on here with us? She is. Let okay. me unmute her okay. and bring her up. Okay. Marsha, are you there with us? And hello. Nice hello. Hi, Marsha. <laughs> Thanks well, for well, the invitation. <laughs> thank you for thank you for joining us. So, oh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so we also um, have a a letter that Ellen was nice enough to put together. That I think, if Ellen doesn't mind, um, I don't know. Do you have it within reach, Ellen? That you could you could read it for us. Well, sure. <laughs> Let me pull it up. <laughs> All right. Um, well, hi, Marcia, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, so it reads, and we'll send you a copy of this. Um, but please accept our sincerest congratulations on the occasion of your retirement as Bloomington Community Farmers Market Coordinator. Your more than 24 years of devoted service have inspired many and set a precedence of excellence that will be difficult to follow. Throughout your impressive tenure, during which you oversaw the growth of a strong local food community, you helped activate access to fresh and healthy foods through your activism in food justice and sustainability, advocated for farmers and food artisans and prioritized their success at the market, and improved food security and food safety, helping to establish the food stamp and nutrition programs to benefit some of our community's most marginalized people. Your ongoing determination and dedication to the field is reflective in your creative solution solutions such as the planter row and meal share, meal share food programs with the Hoosier Hills Food Bank. As well, you gave selflessly of your time and expertise and provided thoughtful mentorship and encouragement to innumerable colleagues, each of whom have gained much from having known or worked with you. We, the Bloomington Parks Board of Commissioners, are enormously grateful for your efforts 
in which you have truly embodied the mission of the community farmers market and developed a resilient local food system. Let there be no doubt, your meaningful work has significantly improved quality of life for the citizens of Bloomington. Regardless of what the future holds, thanks to your superb leadership and passionate commitment to your work, the Bloomington Community Farmers Market has been the gem of this community for decades. Your numerous noteworthy accomplishments leave an indelible mark not only on the Bloomington community, but also on the careers of those fortunate enough to have worked with you over the years. Congratulations again on an outstanding career and very best wishes in your retirement. Thank you so much. Yeah, I totally enjoyed it. Yes, I just wish I was there in person with you all so I could thank you very personally because those are such kind words and I really appreciate them. Well, thank, thank you for your more than 24 years of service. And I was thinking just on the weekend, I'm probably going to have times, it's going to take me a little while. I'm going to go to the farmer's market and I'm going to be, I'm going to be going up to other staff members and say, oh, it's Mar where's Marsha? <laughs> and then it's gonna it's gonna take a while for it to sink in so enjoy your well-deserved retirement i'm sure we'll see you again i am sure we will yeah and i just want to say you know it was just an incredible gift to get to work with the farmers market all those years and i want to thank the department and the city for giving me that opportunity and thank you all for doing all the good work that you do so you know, thank, thank you, Marcia, because 24 years is, you know, a great amount of years serving the, the city and, and it's the same, you know, number of years of one of my daughters and, and, and I believe it's, you know, the same way that you could see someone growing up uh, as a, uh, having a child, you could also see this uh, support and growth that you had with the, with the market. Hmm. Marcia, I just want to also add to that. I personally have greatly valued our relationship, friendship, and our working together over several years. I admire you as a professional. I admire you as a person who's committed to your beliefs, and those beliefs are going to ultimately what's going to sustain us. Thank you again, and this community owes you a great deal of thank you for what you've provided them. I wish you the very best and we'll stay in touch. All right. I look forward to seeing you all around. It's yeah, I am sure that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, best of luck with everything in the future. And thank you for, for popping into the meeting. You are so welcome. Have a good rest of the meeting. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Marcia. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay, um, so then we move into our section C, other business, where we have um, usual sort of contracts and everyday maintenance things that we need to deal with. So first up, we have Darren Eads to tell us about a service agreement with, is it Fodizzo for facility painting? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Fodizzo? Let me bring Darren up. For okay. Us. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Uh, Kathleen, I'll agree with you. I don't know for exactly how to pronounce that. So we're okay. going to call it fish window cleaning because that, that's what their name, name of their company is here in Bloomington. So um, staff recommends the uh, Darren Eads facility coordinator with the Twin Lakes Rec Center. Um, staff recommends the review and approval of a uh, service agreement with um, Fotiso. Uh, window a uh, fish window cleaning service. Um, sorry about that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, uh, this um, I kind of lost track here. So service service agreement with fish window service uh, for the sports division. Um, if this service used, we'll would we'll use funds from each facility's uh, operations budget. Um, those are listed there as an example for a golf course for the TLRC and also for Frank Southern Center. 
fish window cleaning, uh, the name is misleading because they will do a, a wide variety of maintenance. Uh, they will do construction cleanup, painting, gutter cleaning, you name it, they, they do about anything. Uh, so just, a, it's really kind of a great uh, handyman type service to have on, on a, an agreement with. And that way, if something unusual comes up for us that, you know, we can't do in-house or our operation staff can't do, then it just gives us a great opportunity uh, to, to work with this company. So uh, they, they would be used as typically as an as needed basis, see anything in a, in a, um, in, in an everyday use for them. It would just be something uh, as needed. So, uh, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions on this one? I have none, straightforward. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to approve the agreement with Fodizzo Fish Window Cleaning? I will so move. All right, and a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion yes. unanimously carried. All right, thank you, Darren. Thank you, guys. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. And next up, we've been talking about repaving the Bryan Park tennis courts there for a little while. And John Turnbull is going to tell us about the contract with Tennis Technology Incorporated. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. I'm sure Kim was very excited to mute me, but now I'm <laughs> unmuted. <laughs> if Probably I the first... do that more often. <laughs> For the first time, she'll be able to mute me. <laughs> uh, hi, Ellen. It's nice to see you, and thank you for your service to our department. Yeah, nice to see you too, John. Uh, this is um, a contract for the coating and the lining of the Bryan Park tennis courts. No uh, contractor does the full gamut of work on tennis courts. They either do the asphalt, or they do the lining and the coating, and this is the coating and lining portion of this project. Uh, we did send out bids well in advance. These companies are very busy right now because the school corporations have lined up to fix all theirs since they didn't have any school and they didn't have any competition. Uh, but we really like this company. They have done Winslow, they did Sherwood Oaks, they did Southeast Park, and uh, the bid is a uh, general obligation money, $25,895. Even though it's the only quote we got, we, we like it, we feel it's fair, we like their work. So we offer our recommendation to use this company. All right, and I, I think we've noted before there's some just cracks over there from age and also some staining, I think, from some of the trees surrounding the court. So time for upgrade. Yes, and you'll see this project begin in the first or second week of August, depending on weather. I, we put up signs today, um, and Julie's been given all the information on it. We expect some calls, but uh, it will be a three-month process because asphalt has to cure. It has to rest before you can coat it and line it. Okay, good to know the timeline then. So, all right, do we have any questions about this one? I think folks would be curious, John, to know uh, how long the lining lasts, particularly in our climate. I think that's why you're concerned about the, who does it and, and the quality of the materials. Yeah, it's true. Um, there are a lot of factors. I would say one would be um, vegetation and how many leaves and all the vegetation that goes on it can really stain it particularly walnuts are terrible for tennis courts i should note that there is several trees on the east side of these courts that were not overly happy that they're there of course they were planted years and years ago and we just um, as a department and met with each everyone feel that in the tug and pull of that we probably have to leave them. So we're gonna to have to be diligent in getting the vegetation off. You can also clean them with a peroxide cleaner, which we're going to try to do to extend the life. And less, it's almost like, as you know, uh, waxing your car to get 
the the life of of it um, of the lining. So that's it's really a lot of vegetation and UV rays will will do it too. But that's just something you can't you know avoid. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Any other questions? I assume that the timing of this is because of the the cure, like the curing period. Is that right? Yeah, it's going to have to set, and then the temperature still has to be good enough. So they'll do this lining in end of September or early October before the winter. You can't do it when it's below fifty-five at night. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, do we have a motion to approve the contract with Tennis Technology Incorporated? So moved. All right. And a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you, John. Uh, okay, and next up, uh, Crystal Ritter has a um, contract. We have an addendum to the Monroe County Civic Theater for updated performance dates, which I think are going to be in September, fingers crossed. So, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, Crystal Ritter, Community Events Coordinator. Um, I am here today to recommend the approval of the addendum to the partnership agreement with Monroe County Civic Theater for our annual Shakespeare in the Park that happens each year in Waldron Hill and Buskirk Park. Um, you, the board did approve this partnership agreement at the March board meeting, but we are here today to request uh, those performance dates to be moved to September 10th through 13th. This, of course, is dependent on where things are in September, but at this point, we are planning on hosting uh, Shakespeare in the Park at that time with the additional safety precautions that we have been putting into place for other events, such as our concerts and movies, including limiting the audience size, requiring face masks, as well as creating a perimeter with um, one entry exit point for these for the audience and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have okay and I know we I know I mean the department has done some other things right a concert and a movie and with these new guidelines and those have, have seemed to work pretty well so yeah we've we've had our second um I would say what we call our larger concerts in Bryan Park um, this past Sunday, and it went really well. We are restricting the audience size to only 150 people, and we've also been asking people to pre-register to attend. Uh, the, events, the events are free, um, but by having them pre-register, that helps us um, maintain that gathering limit, as well as if we do have a last minute con cancellation or a time change or something, we then can communicate that information out to everyone very easily. Okay, great. Thank you for the explanation on that. So, all right, it's pretty straightforward, just new, new dates for this. So in, unless we have any questions, we'll go ahead and take a motion to approve this addendum. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I have one question. Yeah. So uh, the question is about the uh, the performance. What time are you planning to have the performances? Uh, so the performances are scheduled for Friday, September 10th through Saturday, September 12th. The start time will be 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, September 13th, we will have a matinee that will begin at 2 p.m. And the show this year is Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well. And the play usually runs about three hours, three and a half hours. Thank you, Crystal. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? All right, 
Sound, it sounds so like exotic to actually sit outside in a park and watch a play right now. That sounds like <laughs> I'm writing down the dates. Like, let's definitely do that. So yeah, we're <laughs> we're hoping that we will be there in September watching Shakespeare <laughs> on a sunny day. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, do we have a motion to um, approve this addendum with Monroe County Civic Theater? I'll happily move that we have Shakespeare in the parks. <laughs> All right, and a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion carried. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Um, and Next up, uh, Barb Dunbar is going to tell us about an interesting contract for scatter gardens at White Oak Cemetery. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I've lost video. Well, we can see you, Barb. Okay, well then I won't worry about it. <laughs> we can see and hear you. As soon as I come up, now the screen goes away on me. Okay. Uh, Barb Dunbar, Operations Coordinator. Um, I'm here today to hopefully get your approval on a contract with Cornerstone PDS uh, to perform conceptual design plans for a scatter garden at White Oak Cemetery. The funding source for this contract will be the general operating budget um, uh, from the operations budget. And about a year ago at this time, we actually put this in the budget, the 2020 budget. So now we're getting around to using those funds for what we planned for. A um, little bit of background. Cremation has become a very increasingly popular memorialization option. The National Funeral Directors Association projects the rate of cremation to increase from 50% uh, right now to 55, almost 56% almost in 2020 and then jumping up to 70, almost 71% in 2030. Uh, cremation typically does cost less and is much more environmentally friendly than a standard burial. Mm -hmm. The scatter garden allows family and friends to have a sense of closure and gives them a place to return to in order to remember and celebrate their loved ones. So um, the staff we have met out there um, and, and determined that the lawn area on the east side of White Oak Cemetery, just north of the two existing maples and south of the existing spruce trees would be an ideal location for a scatter garden due to its relative, relatively flat topography. Um, this is, there used to be a uh, Presbyterian church that sat there on that property. I do not remember that, but apparently that was the case. Um, this would be kind of behind where that where that church used to sit, on the back end of where that church used to sit, where it gets nice and flat. So it's a nice location, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Is this so, the, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ellen, go ahead. I, I was just gonna ask if this is the first scatter garden that we've established at a yes. cemetery? Yes, this will be the first scatter garden. We've had a lot of, we have cremation burials and we have a green burial section at White Oak as well, which has become very, very popular. But this will be our first scatter garden. And, and you talked about it as a place that families and friends could return to. So will it have eventually there, do you there, think benches and sort of things yes, like that? And, yes. Okay. In, work, in working with Cornerstone PDS, we've already we've already I have we've already talked to her and told her kind of uh, amenities, I guess you might call them, that we would like to see in there. And benches are definitely some. I also pointed out this could be an ideal location for memorial benches as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, very interesting. Any other questions, Israel or Les? No thanks. I don't have any questions. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Then uh, if there are no other questions, we'll um, have a, if we have a motion to approve the consultant contract with Cornerstone Planning and Design for Scatter Gardens at White Oak Cemetery. I move. 
In a second? Second. All right. Um, and I'm sorry, I keep, I did this last time too in this Zoom format, I keep forgetting. Is there any public comment out there on Facebook or email about any of these things we've talked about so far? Nothing in my email. Okay. There are no, there are no Facebook comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. All right, and then it's always tree trimming or removal season. So Aaron Hatch is here to tell us about a couple of contracts for that. Hi, sorry, I'm a little dark. Um, I have a few different uh, removal contracts. Uh, the first one is with J.R. Ellington Tree Export Expert, and this would actually be a uh, emergency contract um, for two trees, one located near Park Doral Apartments and one located uh, between Blue Slope and Walnut and Ash and a Cherry. Um, these are declining trees that are adjacent to private property and have potential to fall down onto these properties. Uh, the combined total would be $2,600 for removal of these trees within the right of way. And you said you want to, could you tell us a little bit more about the emergency one near Park Doral, you said? Uh, these were both part of emergency uh, tree removals. Basically, uh, they've actually already been completed, um, and this is to have a contract after the fact. Um, and they were in a state that they were going to fall anytime. <laughs> okay. The next strong storm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were going to go down. Okay. All right. Um, do you want me to do the other removal contracts as well? Uh, sure. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about all of them and then we'll go through and vote on each one. That sounds good. Okay. Additionally, we have another contract with J.R. Ellington for uh, ash tree removals along the boundary of Cascade Golf Course and uh, Rosewood Drive. Um, this is for a total of six trees to be removed. Um, they're declining ash related to emerald ash borer. And again, these pose a potential threat um, due to their state and proximity to adjacent private property. Um, J.R. Ellington has done removal services within the Cascade Golf Course prior uh, related to ash removals. And this would be for a total of uh, $9,900. And then lastly, we have another removal contract with bluestone tree and this is for removal of a variety of trees uh, predominantly street trees within the right of way um, that due to their size and location can't be done in house um, and this is for a total of eight thousand one hundred and forty two dollars and forty five cents and a total of four street trees Okay, all right, and okay, those are all the removals are, right, so we have Ellington and, and Bluestone. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's go, uh, any questions about any of those from board members before we vote? Why don't I just make motions and all these and then I can retire from making motions or seconds. And then <laughs> okay, sure. Israel can jump in. <laughs> yeah, you can take okay. the the meeting off, yeah. <laughs> I'll just chill. Okay, here we go. Uh, under uh, item C5, I uh, recommend approval for J.R. Ellington Tree Expert Company for the removal of the ash uh, trees at Park Doral. All right, do we have a second? Second. Okay, and um, any public comments, questions? No comment in the email. Okay. No comments from Facebook. Okay. Thank you. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion carried. 
And next, C6. Under C6, I move for approval for the removal of hazardous tree, uh, trees at Cascades Golf Course to J.R. Ellington Tree Expert. All right, and it, do we have a second? Come on, Israel, jump in. A second. <laughs> all right, uh, and, and uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion carried, and then C7. Okay. okay, under C7, I move approval uh, for the hazardous tree removal, various hazardous tree removals by Bluestone Tree LLC. All right, in a second. I second. All right, and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is carried for that. And then I believe, Aaron, you, you still need to tell us about C8. Is that correct about the emerald ash borer treatments? Yes, that is correct. OK. So uh, additionally, uh, I am asking for approval of an addendum to a previous uh, approved contract with Bartlett um, in regards to emerald ash borer treatment on various park and street trees along uh, the city of Bloomington. This is just to increase the contract to include an additional 67 diameter inches of treatment. So about five or six trees. Um, and it would increase the cost by $586.25 to bring the total, uh, the original contract plus this, to $12,398.75. OK. And I know I remember Lee was always on us to keep on top of the emerald ash borer treatments, so certainly necessary. So any any questions from board members? Yeah, I do. Uh, Aaron, uh, how many inch, uh, inches did you say on that? Uh, this is to add an additional 67 diameter inches, and it would bring the total to uh, 1,417 inches okay that's that makes sense to me because i was thinking that's a hefty price for a few trees <laughs> uh also what is the uh what are they recommending uh retreatment on that two or three years and what are they saying on that uh three years three years that's good that's good uh purdue i think is pushing three years now okay that's all i have okay good any other questions All right. Okay. Do we have a motion on this one? I believe is C8. Remember, Les is semi-retired from motion. So, uh, Ellen, can you make a motion? Sure. <laughs> I'll move to approve uh, the contract with Bartlett Tree for emerald ash borer treatments. All right, and do we have a second? I second. All right, and any public comments or questions? None on, fa and none on email. Okay. No comments on Facebook. Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> aye. Kathleen, just a yes. parliamentary notion. Yes. Uh, before we vote, should we ask for the public comment? I was thinking about that. It, it's, yeah. I, you mean before I, I can't we, remember how that works. Before we even the, have, yeah, but I've done it the last couple, but I haven't, I forgot in the first three or four items, but yeah. But I also thought, I don't know if it's acceptable to check in with the public comment even before we have the motion. I don't know. No, I think that happens after the motion. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, I've remembered, that's what we've been doing now after a little, after forgetting at the beginning. <clears throat> I've done it so many times that I can't, I can't remember sometimes even yeah. how, how it works. <laughs> it's just reflexive. All right, I think, did we vote just now on that one? I think we did. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. All right, so thank you, Aaron. That one motion passes unanimously.
game. And Steve Cotter is out there somewhere in the ether to tell us about a consultant contract with West Incorporated for Griffey Lake Nature Preserve Master Plan Update. Yes, thank you. I am here. And I am here today to ask for your approval for a contract with West Inc. to update the Griffey Master Plan. The original long range use and management plan was done in 1984 for Griffey. Uh, we updated it with the Griffey Lake Master Plan in 2008. And now we're doing it uh, little by little. Last year we updated the vegetation portion of the plan. And over the next 12 months, we'd like to hire West to update the amphibian, reptile, and bird inventories, and also to make management recommendations for those species. Uh, the contract amount would not exceed $17,097, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Oh, I should also mention, um, Kim, I believe, sent you a, a update just today. Uh, the Name on uh, the vendor form is different from the name on the contract. Uh, so we are um, correcting that. So West Inc. is uh, the group, they're a local group actually in town uh, who we'd like to hire for this. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Any uh, questions or comments from board members? Now, other than it's a very fascinating uh, process reading through. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I agree. I was like things I hadn't thought about before about, about yeah, the Griffey Lake area. So, and certainly if it's been since 1984, it's time for, it's time for an update. It was updated in 2008. Oh, sorry, okay. We're now yeah. updating it again. Again, okay. Still time for an update, so. All right. Um, so do we have a motion to approve this contract with West Incorporated? I'll move to approve it. Okay. Approve the contract with West. And the second? I second. Okay. And any public comments or questions? None in my email. There are no comments on Facebook. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Hello. Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. And Steve also is going to tell us about the uh, contract addendum with Mater Design for the Griffey Loop, Griffey Loop Trail. Yes, thank you. Mater Design is designing the approximately six mile loop trail that will circumnavigate the western portion of Griffey Lake. Uh, the eastern end of the loop will be adjacent to Headley Road across from the boathouse. And there will be a fishing pier there that sticks out into the lake. And we're really excited about getting people off the road so that they can access trails on the north side and south side of the lake without walking in the road. Um, at the other end of the loop, at the far west end, the trail is slated to go over the dam. And we've been working with uh, City of Bloomington Utilities on that plan. They would like us to work with um, Christopher Burke Engineering, who is familiar with that infrastructure uh, to ensure that the trail users are safe and that the integrity of the dam is maintained through the construction and use process. And so this addendum, um, not to exceed $18,046, uh, and this will be coming from the Bicentennial Bond, would allow Mater to work with Christopher Burke to ensure that the trail is safe and that the uh, dam remains structurally sound. Okay, all very important. Nice to get people, as you say, too, not having to walk on the road there. So, all right, any questions or comments from board members? Okay. Uh, all right. So we have a motion to approve the contract addendum with major design. So oh, move. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Les. Couldn't take it, Les. Okay. All right. And a second. 
Second. Okay. All right. And any public comment or questions? No public comment and email. <clears throat> Nothing I'd, I'd on like to, Facebook. Okay. I'd like to acknowledge Steve uh, and his working knowledge of this, working with utilities and all, because uh, that's the last thing we want to do is have a problem that can be laid on our doorstep with that dam. Very true. Yes. So, all right. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. And now Dave Williams will tell us about the design contract with Aztec, Aztec Engineering or the Bicentennial Duke Trail. Right, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, wonderful, a Zoom meeting that's working. <laughs> um, bear with me, this, this uh, project has a lot of tangents and I believe Kim has a couple of uh, visual aids. Kim, if you could pull up the, the uh, overhead of the trail route. Uh, on the left, uh, it, in Roger Street, um, on the right-hand side of the illustration, the aerial map would be the start of the trail. It is literally right across the street from the entrance, the main entrance on Roger Street to Switchyard Park. This trail project has been talked about conceptually for almost as long as I've been with the city of Bloomington, but $1.4 million was included in the Bicentennial Trails and Trees Bond to uh, construct a multi-purpose paved trail within the roughly 150 foot wide easement that Duke Energy holds um, under their power line towers that run from Rogers Street to Weimar Road. Uh, we feel that for 1.4 million, we can get to the western boundary. There are basically three property owners from Rogers to Weimar. The majority, the vast majority of this route, about 0.9 miles of the 1.3 miles is owned by the Monroe County Commissioners. I think the initial master plan for acquisition of this property was the proposed long ago juvenile justice center. Uh, I think that was the facility that was to be constructed and may yet be constructed on that property. But right now, what we would like to do is build within the easement that Duke owns. And we met with Duke Energy officials about a year ago, and they are very supportive of the project. Now they have some requirements that will add cost to our project. They do not want for example, the trail construction to be added to the, the terrain right now, they do not want it even inches closer to their overhead power lines. We have to be 25 feet away from their towers. Uh, but we're working with Adrian Reed of Aztec Engineering. Adrian is here for any questions that you may have. He's um, participating in this meeting as well. And we have talked this uh, project over every which way but loose. And what we think we can do is build from Rogers Street where there'll be a walk-in trailhead, a 12 foot wide paved trail, which is our standard, uh, and go to the western edge of the Monroe County Commissioner's property. At that point, there would likely be a pedestrian, bicycle and pedestrian roundabout or turnaround. The planning department advises us that the two private properties, which are formerly the Sudbury Farm properties, which are now owned by development in are required by way of the very dated but still valid Sudbury Planning Unified Development Proposal, which will put the responsibility on those developers to continue the trail all the way to Weimar Road. We just do not think we can go all the way to Weimar, uh, nor should we, particularly if it's a developer responsibility. Um, but the planning department has assured us that that would be a requirement for any PUD proposal. So I can't give you a, a good estimation as to the timeline, but we do have funding to at least get to the western edge of the Monroe County Commissioner's property. And then in the future, those properties develop, we would make it all the way to Weimar Road. And that is literally a home run for trail development. We would have eastern access to the Switchyard Park. We would have western access within a third of a mile to the Clear Creek Trailhead at Tap Road. 
the Wapahani Mountain Bike Park, and eventually, by way of what we have heard for many years, will be opening some side path development on Lima Road. You would have connectivity to the Twin Lakes properties, the rec center and the ball fields. But what we are proposing Aztec Engineering do is design the trail for construction, 0 0.90 miles, but also conceptually illustrate where we think the trails should go within the Duke alignment, all the way to Weimar Road, with connections to what we assume will be an approved project called Osage uh, Place, I think. It's an up and coming Habitat for Humanity project that will uh, skirt the southern boundary of this trail near RCA Park, but connections to RCA Park, future conceptual connections to Summit School and some of the other developments, um, but the, those would be illustrated by Aztec Engineering, but the nuts and bolts of their design contract would be to construct, or I'm sorry, to design for bidding and construction a paved trail uh, about 0.9 miles from the west side of Rogers to the western edge of the commissioner's property. In addition, we have kind of an outlying need that was affiliated back in the design, uh, so we're talking several years ago of Switchyard Park. There is a very difficult Clear Creek trail or sidewalk crossing on the east side of Rogers Street. Um, this would come up to the southern boundary of the warehouse church property. We're not unlike any other private developer. We are obligated to connect our property at Switch Art Park to the next adjoining property owner. This became just a very difficult um, property to assess or this project to bridge over Clear Creek, provide a sidewalk connection it pretty much was determined early on in our switch our park design that to include it would put the park design and the permitting well behind schedule. So admittedly, we punted it. Um, we would now like Aztec Engineering and working closely not only with our department, but with the Department of Public Works engineering section to design a code compliant sidewalk connection um, to the warehouse property, which would meet our obligation by ordinance to connect sidewalks, but it also provides a bicycle and pedestrian safe route on the east side of Rogers Street. We will also include a pedestrian activated strobe pedestrian crossing signal, if you can think of 4th Street and Rogers, um, with the rapid beacon lights that a pedestrian can activate, vehicles stop, people can cross. So we'll have a sidewalk connection to Switchyard Park and by way of this crossing to the trailhead of the Duke overhead power line trail. And we'll also have a, a, a side path connection. So we've, we've received some complaints about the lack of a sidewalk connection on Rogers Street. Now, there is not money identified in the Bicentennial Trails and Trees uh, account or funding for this, but we will at least have a design. We requested it in our 2019 budget, capital budget, it was not funded. We think TIF funding would ultimately be available, but in order for that conversation to move ahead, we have to design it. We have to have it permitted by the DNR because it is construction floodway. You have to have some buy-in and support by our city engineering staff. So Adrian with Aztec Engineering, uh, would design that um, sidewalk crossing and would, it would be ready to bid. And then we'll have to step back and reassess where our funding is to move forward. So the request is for $203,619 to design for construction and bidding the 0 0.90 miles Duke overhead power line trail. That's the name we're using today to look at some connections for future privately built connections to Weimar Road. Uh, connections will be included in our project to RCA Park and the Habitat for Humanity uh, neighborhood. And then also, again, the design for the sidewalk connection in the northwest corner of uh, Switch Art Park. And with that, I can answer any questions. If or they're technical, I'll defer to Adrian Reed with Aztec Engineering. 
All right. Thank, thank you for that detailed explanation, Dave. And yeah, I just, I, this is not highly technical, just since Adrian's here, I just wondered the difficulty of the things that you mentioned that Duke wants you to do with this, whether Adrian could just speak to how challenging that is or whether those things are pretty easy to deal with. Uh, most of the Duke requirements are uh, sort of distance requirements from uh, the uh, very large transmission uh, structures that are uh, in the easement. Um, you know, that, that's just a, an exercise in uh, you know, draw, drawing lines to uh, avoid or to keep uh, minimum distances uh, and things of that nature. But there are a couple uh, areas uh, where there uh, could be low water crossings and, and Duke also has some uh, weight requirements. Uh, presumably for segments of this, they, they may want uh, their equipment to be able to access uh, certain locations. Uh, so it, it's mostly things of that nature. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and any board members have any other questions for Dave or for Adrian? I do, if I may. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Dave, I assume, yes. well, I don't necessarily have to assume, but will the specifications for, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the private development also be a part of this package so that they will know what they're getting into when that, that land uh, develops? Th that land has sat there, obviously, ripe for development for many years, and that's basically what slowed this thing down. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Sudbury property has now been sold, probably will develop in the near, not too, too distant future. Mm -hmm. uh, what about those specifications, Dave? Yes, lessons learned with, I think, the Renwick project. Uh, yeah, we just exactly. don't have handshake agreements anymore. Hey, you build a trail connection. Uh, we will give them very specific trail cross sections depth of pavement, uh, the sub base, the width, and as indicated, Adrian's firm will provide a conceptual route. So now we're constrained by doing it within the easement width and under the towers, but if there's a hook here or a bridge there, we'll call that out. It won't be uh, build ready construction documents that Aztec will provide, but it will show and we will share with the city planning department the way we see the route going. Now, quite frankly, as long as we get to Weimar Road, if the development wants to circumnavigate around and make it more of a feature of their development, I think a lot of more astute developers are starting to see trails as an amenity. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't be opposed to that. Again, the home run for us is to get to Weimar Road. Um, and, and, but we will illustrate at least one route that we feel is the best way to get to Weimar. Uh, we will share that with planning, and we'll also include specifications for how to build the trail. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the, boy, the connectivity is really exciting in this. I mean, I feel like the last couple of years that I've been on the, the parks board, it was just more and more things coming together. And I, I noticed it when the quarantine first started, and we were all desperate to get out of our house, and I was like, oh, there's this trail and now I can just go over to this trail and then I can, I'm, so that's just wonderful. Oh yes, C Kathleen yeah. Cabin Fever is upon us and yeah. the numbers <laughs> of trail users, new trail users, trail users that are doing more miles because they have more time. Yeah. I've never seen more people on all of our trails. So the opportunity to make this just one, I mean, you think about what you as a vehicle operator have to contend with road and this can be literally a main line arterial connecting the two it's pretty exciting and again it's been talked about for 20 years i think some of us were a little surprised that duke was so amenable to the proposal but to have their support behind it is, is a great opportunity to make a, a good trail connection i think this is very good optics for duke and i think they they realize absolutely that. And surprisingly less, they, they indicated to us that not Duke is more than Indiana. Obviously, there are many different states that they have their facilities in. They are doing these uh, trails. I think it also serves, as Adrian indicated, as kind of a service road. Um, but they're open-minded to it. And uh, I think it's a good PR move for them. And it, it can be done in a safe way. And uh, I think it uh, serves both parties quite well. 
<laughs> if I might, Kathleen, there's sure. an interest. There's an interesting educational point that I think our viewers and even our new board members might be interested in. Uh, for many, many decades, the Parks Commission has had a representative on the Plan Commission. That representative is now Israel. And I think our, our citizens would be probably quite surprised, and Dave's aware of this. We have in planning developments for areas by, by the good work of particularly Joe Hoffman, who recently was on the board, uh, specifications that in effect require developers when they develop certain areas to uh, provide park amenities, including trails. And those are pretty ironclad. Uh, and we see it happening in many of the meetings of the plan commission where a developer, uh, for example, uh, uh, down the uh, on uh, south of town have had to build bridges and trails to facilitate all that development down at Sarah Road. Those were agreed to probably almost 20 years ago. Yep. And, and this is an important device that the Plan Commission has to service its long range goals. And, and it's an example of why long range planning is so important. You, you take uh, the Clear Creek Trail system. That's, that's never been fully ex executed but it is basically on the board. Uh, as Dave knows, uh, we have easements all down through there. Uh, yeah. You go further north on Clear Creek, uh, we have easements all along that, that part of the, the creek area. Uh, it's all because parks and planning have worked together for decades to facilitate this kind of unfolding of what are now becoming crucial, uh, highly regarded amenities. Wouldn't have known that 50 years ago, but Correct. that is it the case now. Pretty adversarial decades ago to build yes, trails. It, now it's it would have been unheard of. Everyone wants, yes. But they were built into uh, the, how shall we say, uh, broad planning parameters for various uh, zoning areas over, over all those years, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, we can be very proud of. Yep. So enough for my lecture, but... Uh, it's an interesting point. No, that's very interesting to get the historical perspective of how it wouldn't have been as easy to do decades ago. I mean, I don't, I, I didn't realize that. I think probably a lot of other people didn't either. So, and there were many, many battles on this. Uh, uh, I, I came into the Parks Board, um, also was the Plan Commission representative during those adversarial days that Dave knows about, and these were hard fought and. Uh, in many instances, in, in some instances, we, we had to buck the state on trail development. Nobody wanted trails, mm -hmm. uh, it's true. but we, we won. And uh, now we get to see the, the fruits of those battles, uh, well worth it. And now many other communities and states are doing the very same thing. Very true. All right. Um... All right, thank, thank you, Les. Any other uh, comments or questions from board members? Yeah, thank you, Dave. I have just one question regarding the, uh, the possible future connections to Summit Elementary School. And just wondering, uh, this depends on, on, on what? I think, uh, Israel, the, perhaps the best route to Summit School is a connection from this Duke overhead power line trail to RCA Park. And then there's an old farm road on the south border of RCA Park that literally goes to, and I think a lot of children are using it today, although it's not an improved trail, uh, that comes into kind of the back door of the Summit School and their playground. Um, that's something I think this trail project can kind of start the route on and instead of going through the deep woods all the way to the northern, from the northern boundary of RCA Park, we get children, bikes, pedestrians, adults on the Duke Trail connected to RCA Park, lead them through RCA Park, and then construct a whole nother trail to the Summit School. And that would be part of the outline trail that Aztec Engineering would provide for us. 
Okay, thank you, Larry. Okay, any other questions or comments for Dave or Adrian? I, I don't have any comments. Les, it's good to see you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Glad you're doing okay. <laughs> I'm here, like the battles. <laughs> He was our engineer for a while there, a long time. Oh, oh okay. A while. <laughs> Don't hold that against him. <laughs> uh, okay, so do we have a motion to approve design contract with Aztec Engineering Group? Yeah, I move to approve the contract with Aztec Engineering Group. All right, in a second. A second. All right, and any public comments or questions on this one? No comments in my email. There are no comments on Facebook. Okay, all right, thank you. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 My teenage son also just voted with us from the other room, but I don't think that's valid. So, <laughs> uh, all right, motion. Motion carried. Thank you, Dave and Adrian. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dave. Good work, Dave. Thank you. And finally, Eric Pearson is here to tell us about two Banneker related things. Uh, the floor covering, not nearly as interesting as the the second floor covering is important, but but do we have uh, do we have Eric here? Yes, yes. Hi there. Hello. Uh, Eric Pearson, program facility coordinator at the Banneker Community Center. Uh, staff recommends the approval of a contract with Wiley's floor covering to replace the flooring in the Banneker kitchen. Uh, in 2019, we received a grant from Regional Opportunity Initiatives for $199,600 to improve the facility in different spaces uh, to become a cultural hub for underserved Bloomington residents. Um, a portion of this funding included refurbishments to the Banneker kitchen space that have taken place. Um, with the initial grant award, ROI did not fund uh, flooring for the, the kitchen. After um, the kitchen improvements took place, however, there was a surplus of funds and we've worked with ROI um, to gain their approval to, to pursue this. So uh, we will have, we'll, we will be able to use grant funds to support this, but um, we're looking forward to another upgrade that space. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Any questions or comments from board members? Sounds great. Okay. All right. Um, good use of the of the funds over there for renovations. So do we have a motion to approve the contract with Wiley floor covering for Banneker kitchen floor? I'll move to uh, approve the contract with Wiley floor covering. All right. Do we have a second? I second. All right, and any public comments or questions? None in email. There are none on Facebook. Okay. All right, we do have a comment, oh, just from Nichelle Whitney, glad to see these improvements happening. Uh, and I believe Nichelle is on our Banneker advisory group, yes. All right. Great, so uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion carried. And then Eric gets to tell us about a, um, a cool uh, Banneker Advisory Council recommendation for a street mural project. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm joined also by Sean Starowitz and Shatoya Moss, and then our Advisory Council members, Nichelle Whitney, Joy Roberts, and Rochelle Brown. Um, staff recommends review and support of the recommendation from the Banneker Community Center Advisory Council to pursue street murals on Elm Street and in the downtown area. Um, Advisory Council members Nichelle Whitney and Joy Roberts recommended to me that a mural containing the words Black Lives Matter be painted on Elm Street between 7th and 8th in front of the Banneker Gym. Further discussions took place between uh, the Office of the Mayor, Community and Family Resources, Economic and Sustainable Development, and Public Works, of which support for the murals was unanimous. On July 15th, in a special session, the Banneker Advisory Council voted to recommend two, mur two murals be implemented by the City of Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department 
In addition, uh, the advisory council recommends the Elm Street mural be designed by local black artists and community members be invited to participate in the painting. The advisory council recommends the city of Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department facilitate the street mural projects in purpose and funding and continue to develop conversations and seek actionable steps that focus on equity and investment in black and brown businesses and neighborhoods. Funding will be allocated from City of Bloomington Economic and Sustainable Development, uh, their arts area, including funds allocated towards the since canceled uh, 2020 Blackie Brown Arts Festival. Uh, some additional details as well. Uh, the street mural along Elm Street is recommended to have a lifespan of approximately two years. Um, this is due in part to uh, Elm Street being slated to be milled and paved at that time. Uh, artists will be responsible for the maintenance of the mural. Uh, and in 2021, hopefully, you know, if COVID allows, at the Black E. Brown Arts Festival, artists will be invited to join a rededication um, ceremony wherein the mural will be, will be touched up at that time. Uh, if approved or, or recommendation, as supported by uh, the Board of Parks Commissioners. The next steps will be uh, to go before the City Council as a resolution, then the Bloomington Arts Commission, and finally, the Board of Public Works. Um, selection of the second mural site is to be determined. However, uh, we are considering, uh, and the thought process has been Kirkwood near People's Park um, to pay homage to the, the black market that was there and firebombed in 1968. Um, Assistant Director for the Arts, Sean Starwitz, will uh, collect submissions from local black artists uh, who will provide example of previous works as we uh, work to identify three who will be selected uh, that will represent one word each, black lives and matter. Uh, the artists will be paid and um, obviously a next step beyond that would be purchasing of the paint itself. So um, obviously um, you know, we're excited about the opportunity to present this recommendation from the Banneker Advisory Council. It's the first one we've done in a while. Uh, and we're here to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Um, any questions from board members? I just like to make a comment. I think it's a, it's a great project. I think it's a good thing that uh, we have the uh, Arts Commission and the sustainability uh, folks involved in this. Uh, having been a member of the Arts Commission, it's Sounds to me like a perfect kind of community project uh, for that <laughs> group to spearhead. Uh, so uh, I say, let her go. Uh, let's do it. Uh, it's it's got several steps to go through, but I'm one vote for it. Yes, I, I was going to say I know I've seen similar murals in some other cities, and I've seen overhead shots of the street mural, and it's really powerful to see. Um, and I, and I like the idea that it can be, can be two years and it can be touched up and really enduring. And those both sound like excellent locations for the, you know, if the people's park area one ends up happening, but, but certainly the, the previous, the first location as well. I think you said Elm street. Is that right? Yeah, that would be in front of our gym here at the right. And, um, I, I definitely want to, highlight um, the advisory council, specifically Nichelle and Joy, um, who spearheaded this effort. Uh, you know, we're, we're quite proud of the group that we've assembled on, that, on, the, on the advisory council and the, um, the people they represent within the community. And so having um, them be a part of our process and a sounding board for us to, to recommend different things is, is really important to our mission. And uh, we're, we're extremely thankful for their efforts in this regard. I know, um, They've, they've worked extremely hard with the rest of the advisory council and it shows. Yes, definitely. Thank you to Nichelle and Joy and, and all the other people on the advisory council. This is, I feel like we've seen so many exciting things out of Banneker the last, last couple of years. So, so do we have any just, other comments or questions? Just um, one would, more. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I agree. Um, just kind of echoing what's already been said. It makes me really proud to see our community um, be able to come up with something like this. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited. Thank you so much to um, uh, Nichelle and Joy for being so active on the advisory council and really um, being catalysts for moving this forward. That's the kind of community participation that we need. And so thank you so much for that. Um, I guess a question I have, I don't know if this is 
Will the second, the approval of the second mural come through this board also? Um, you know, what we're also, but uh, just to interrupt for a second, Kim, if you wanted to put up the proposal um, as well, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, that is to be determined. Uh, I think what we're looking for today is a uh, kind of a vote of support for us to move forward with this process. And so that's something that as we work with, um, you know, community and family resources, uh, you know, ESD, these other areas, I think that's the specific location of that second site is to be determined. But um, it seems, you know, that that is a specific recommendation from the advisory council that there be multiple murals, uh, one being in the downtown area. And so I think, um, you know, that's, that's what we can commit to for this recommendation, but um, the specifics of that site are to be determined. I guess um, I, 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 uh, I think that the redistribution of funding from the, that are, un, I assume that's unused funding from the Black and Brown Festival that is um, going towards us, that, is that correct? That's right, yeah, and that's, um, just to be clear, that's coming from uh, Sean Starwitz's area uh, in the arts program and, and economic and sustainable development. So, um, but yeah, the extra you know money that was obviously left over from that event will be used towards this for sure. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Sean, um, for that. And I guess one of the things that I would want to say is if we're considering, when we consider funding, and I don't know if this is the appropriate venue for this or not, but when we consider funding for the second mural, it would be um, great to look at where else the funding for that could come from um, just to sort of, um, you know, think about what other areas, it, rather than taking from funds that are already allocated for this kind of initiative, are there other places that we could take that money from in the future? Just Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Sean, do you mind kind of jumping in and maybe you can speak on that a little bit further? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and really, first of all, I just want to uh, uh, just thank Nichelle and Joy for all the work that they put into this proposal and, and this work. It's really their work. We're just really trying to facilitate this conversation and this kind of activation in our community uh, to, to, to really pay tribute to and, and really abide by that Black Lives Matter. So uh, I just want to thank them for that. Uh, there, yeah, there's a couple of different moving parts, right? This is a new process for a lot of, not only a lot of cities in terms of how we can do this, where, you know, um, we're, we're street murals, if they're in an intersection, it's jurisdictionally very different than being in a street. So we're just trying to go through a variety of different processes. Elm Street really allows it um, allows for a unique kind of artistic um, version, which uh, there's been a few in like um, Harlem and the Bronx that have been more artistic. And that's kind of the approach we're hoping to do on Elm Street where the downtown conversation would probably be more of the traditional kind of just tra high yield traffic paint either uh, white, yellow, it's pretty limited in, in kind of color scope just because of the, the, it's only manufactured in a certain way. And because drivers are trained uh, to, to, you know, to, to essentially yield to those colors, it's a safety factor. Um, so that's, and that's kind of the conversation. I think also Nichelle and Joy were very explicit that they would like to see what kind of county conversation and county partnership is involved in this. Um, and then there's also the group Enough is Enough, which is also involved in conversations on um, renaming Jordan Avenue. And so the potential of us actually having three across our community and, and Jordan Avenue, while we as a city share that with IU, maybe IU's contribution can be the portion of Jordan Avenue that they maintain. So um, yeah, the funding mechanism is, is, is a, bit of a, uh, a bit of a challenge, right? Where the, you know, due to COVID too, we're shifting a lot of funding. Um, we had already allotted specifically that funding for Blackie Brown going directly towards artists. So it was an easy kind of shift. And the Bloomington Arts Commission has been very focused on equity and inclusion and supporting artists of color. We've tried to revamp our RFQ process in a lot of different ways to make it more accessible and remove systemic barriers that have privileged mostly white artists um, to participate in the <laughs> art field. So we've tried to um, revamp our process to be uh, more equitable and, and more just in that kind of approach. 
Um, the high yield traffic pain is something that probably Public Works will be involved with too, in terms of the downtown mural versus the Elm Street mural. So there's a couple of different moving parts that we're still, this is like, um, technically, I guess the Parks Board is really the first stop in this kind of conversation. And uh, we're hoping that also too, that this uh, process through Nichelle and Joy's work uh, really brings about a larger kind of policy and equity conversation as we go through these public meetings. So you all are the first stop and then, you know, a different conversation at the Board of Public Works and then maybe a different conversation at the Bloomington Arts Commission. So I think um, that's something that these other Black Lives Matter murals haven't really had the conversation around where they just kind of put them up and some people in the, in the community asked for them, some people didn't, some people see it as virtue signaling. And we really see this as an opportunity to engage in larger uh, conversations around equity and inclusion in our community. So that was a really long-winded answer. I'm sorry to take up time. It's, um, yeah, I, I think it's an important conversation to have and uh, the more context for all of us, the better, right? Yeah, and, and if I could just jump in for a second, um, obviously there's a lot of moving parts with this uh, and there's a lot of different approval processes, specifically what we're looking for today from the, the Parks Board is a review and support of this recommendation um, so that we can move forward within these next processes. And, and so that, that's what, um, Specifically, uh, we're, we're asking for is just a, a vote of support for this recommendation. Okay, yeah, thank you, Eric. And thank you, Sean, for that larger context too. That was interesting about having other discussions about artist access and not just painting the street and then that's it, let's move on. So yeah, that's very important. If I could, I would like to, if it's possible, I'd like to invite um, Michelle and or Joy to, if they have any comments as well. Sure. Um, Sorry, I might take a second to get them okay. ready to go. We're working on it, hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Nich Nichelle writes that she has no comment. Okay. Okay. Um, and Shatoya Moss as well, uh, if she has um, anything to mention from, from her side of things as well. That would be, that'd be great. There you go. Rick, um, I just wanted to reiterate, um, thank you to Michelle and Joy for the work that they've done. We are really excited to get this project started. Uh, Sean and I have worked together with the Blackie Brown Festival and we're really happy to see these funds still continue to go to black and brown artists, especially something that will live on our community. So. Right, great, thank you. Absolutely. Captain? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So um, I I could see that the deadline for submissions was today, right? July 28th. I wonder if we have any update about the number of submissions. And I could also see that in the in the PowerPoint, in, in the slides that um, were shown, we also have uh, the invitation to the uh, Latino community. Uh, but uh, in the other, the other in the package, we don't have the invitation to the to the Latino community as well. So I wonder if it's just limited to bl the uh, black artists or both, as it was presented in the in the PowerPoint. Okay, so maybe is that a question maybe for Eric or Sean? Do you mind answering the the submission process and the deadline there, and then maybe touch on? Um, you know, black and or brown artists. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think I think there's definite, definitely there's an opportunity for intersectionality he, here. I would I would kind of defer to Michelle and Joy. I think we're going to see what we get for the submissions. As of right now, we have six submissions total, so that's not um, that's not a, a lot to choose from. I will probably extend that um, just based off of um, just what we have right now. Um, I think uh, for us, there, I think there is an opportunity to kind of open that conversation. I think the priority would be. Um, black artists specifically for this opportunity doesn't mean that other through next year with the Blackie Brown Arts Festival as it expands and one thing that I didn't mention was that the Banneker Center has traditionally been the heartbeat of the Blackie Brown Arts Festival it was the first site and as we expanded last year and we really gained momentum and tripled our attendance and was able to you know activate the Waldron and do a block party you know the Banneker Center has always been kind of that heartbeat for that 
So I, I, I do think that there is probably an opportunity for Latino artists. I think it's just probably preferred um, that it's, it's black artists for this moment. Um, and, but also that doesn't mean that there isn't, um, we, we still are working this out with the artists that we're gonna hopefully work with, which is the community opportunity uh, you know, d you know, physically distancing and trying to keep everybody safe, there can be this community opportunity to paint the mural. So the idea would be that there is this substrate, uh, which is the high traffic color, which would be white or yellow, and then there can be additional colors that are uh, that are put on each letter, and that can be a community activated where there's there's you know it can be all walks of life of people participating in that process, and we want to. We want to be able to work with the artist to design the mural that way so that it is a larger community effort. And once again, it, it circles back on that larger conversation. I think that's what Michelle and Joy wanted out of this, which is not just for us to just say Black Lives Matter and virtue signal that way, but actually like really live by that and really do that through the work and through the labor of the community coming together to paint the mural. So I hope that answers your question. And thank you, Sean. The other, the other question that I have that I, that I saw different from the PowerPoint and the and the and the package is the responsibility. Uh, in the PowerPoint, we could see that the city would be the one along with the artist, but we uh, we could see in the additional details that just the artist will be the responsible for the maintenance of the mural if there is something wrong with the mural. So at the end, would be both or would be just the artist. Sorry, I got muted again. Okay, there we go. Yeah, no, so what we mean by that, we, we would pay if, 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 God forbid, anything happened or if it was vandalized, the city would pay the artists. The, the, art, the way we do contracts, the, they are the first line of defense in terms of maintenance of a mural. Um, and if they can't do it, then we seek other services. But it, it, there's a, it's called the uh, Visual Artist Rights Act. And if we violate that, if we were, let's say if the artist moves, out of town in the next year. Um, and it's uh, vandalized or maybe it comes under disrepair for some reason because there's a, bu a bunch of trucks that drive over it or what, you know, whatnot. Um, they, they have to refuse the, the, the maintenance of it and then we can seek another artist to do that or another opportunity. We would not put them on the um, hook for maintenance. We, we budget for that in a couple different ways from a couple different pools of money. So it's not, we, it's explicit that they would be the point of reference for maintenance because they are conceptually designing the mural. Um, so it's not like that they're on the hook for, for maintenance. Um, so that's just one of the kind of the, the nuance we have with um, this, this federal act called the Visual Artist Rights Act. And Kathleen, if I may ask my last question. Yes, sure. So uh, in one part of the package, it says invitation and the other part, we're talking about submissions. So are we handle um, both, like inviting the artists that a, the poor might be interested or it's just a submission a process? John and, and his area are leading the um, receiving of the, of the submissions of artists. Um, our role in this is um, you know, facilitating this initial uh, review of support since it uh, emanated from the Banneker Advisory Council, the recommendation did. Uh, so that's what kind of we're here today for. And, and um, you know, Sean and, and his area, again, are, are the ones that are coordinating the effort to actually receive submission from local Black artists. And we, and we, we sent it out to the Blackie Brown listserv. That was the, so like the previous artists we've worked with or people that we've kind of tried to court over the last year, um, we have created an invitation for them to submit, um, and we've gotten six submissions so far. So I think, um, like I said, we'll probably extend that deadline a little bit so that we can get a, a few more submissions just to choose from. Um, we've had them as young as 14, and uh, you know, which is great to have somebody in high school to want to participate in this project. So um, we, it, it's kind of a, a, and it will probably be a grab bag in terms of how we do selection process. It will probably inv involve some members of the Banneker Advisory Council, uh, as well as members of the Bloomington Arts Commission uh, and 
probably Shatoya Moss. And so it's always a kind of a grab bag of people that are part of a public selection process in terms of that's, and that's how most public art is chosen in our community is it's a mix of the Bloomington Arts Commission and whatever department it's collaborating with. And then, um, you know, various members of the public, um, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we'd be happy, you know, hopefully by this time next month to give you all an update on, you know, what artists were selected and that kind of stuff. But that's really usually, um, I think the city relies on the Bloomington Arts Commission to run that kind of um, process. Right. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate Rev, real quick, if I could, um, this is just the first step in a, in a, in a series of processes. Um, so um, since, like I said before, uh, the recommendation came from the Vanneker Advisory Council, that's why this review of the recommendation and the support vote is here before you today. Um, and then it still has to go through a city council resolution, um, Bloomington Arts Commission and Board of Public Works. So that's kind of the next steps that we have uh, lined up to, to fully move forward with it. But today, specifically, it's just reviewing the recommendation and, and be able to offer a vote on the support. If I can make one comment before you guys conclude this discussion, this is Nichelle Whitney. I just wanted to make it clear that on the journey of going through this project, there just seem to be many hoops to jump through. That's also part of the bigger conversation that we want to have with this mural is how to make um, decisions and, and contributions. So I hear you guys thanking us for our work, but how to make us feel valued in the work that we're doing and to make it seem like we can bring forward ideas in our community and not have to essentially perform a circus act to move anything forward. And I'm not necessarily saying that our conversation with you guys is the biggest hurdle, but just the process in general. So as we build out this mural and we're asking people to be held accountable, I would like for that to be one thing that we do consider. How do we make community voices feel amplified and lifted without needing to jump through hoops or to feel in any way that there's pushback systemically? So I just wanted to share that point. I'm thankful that we are able to have this conversation and I look forward to seeing where this goes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nichelle. That's a that's a really interesting point to keep in mind as we as we go forward. So, any other uh, board questions or comments? Yeah, I, I have one question about the selection. So we have um, or you have six submissions right now. You're going to spend that, uh, and maybe you mentioned this, John or Eric. Uh, so, the selection committee would be the uh, advisory board. Uh, uh, in conjunction with the city and other community members? Yeah, it would probably be a mix. So it'd probably be some members of the, like Michelle and Joy makes sense, right? It's their project. Uh, it's been, uh, well, it's the community's project, right? So, it, but they, you know, they're, they're the representatives of the Banneker Advisory Council that brought this proposal, right? And then we would probably have one or two members of the Bloomington Arts Commission and then potentially one or two members from the public. Um, so it just kind of depends on on the process and how uh, we kind of what what the time frame of it is to get this thing done, uh, you know those kinds of things, and and thinking about um, how fast we can kind of turn that around. But that would be roughly that's how I think the Bloomington Arts Commission would see this process going in terms of selection. Yeah, thank you, Shane. Just as a note, uh, Israel. Uh, we went through that process with Sean and, and a mix like that with the uh, art that was proposed for the uh, Switchyard Park. And uh, it works and it, it brings many voices to the, uh, the equation, uh, which is, I think, symbolic, supposes, should be a symbolic of our community and we should be sure to foster. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, uh, we have any other questions or comments before we go to a vote here? Okay. All right. So uh, do we have a motion for uh, approval of contract, approval of Banneker Advisory Council recommendation for street mural projects? I move to approve the uh, Advisory Council's recommendation. Okay. And do we have a second? I second. All right. Um, and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion unanimously carried. Um, and 
All right, and then we will go back over to Paula for any um, updates that she might want to give us about things going forward. Um, great, thank you. Um, just two items. Um, last month you approved the contract for our parks master plan with Troyer group out of Mishawaka, Indiana. And uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, we have our first uh, steering committee uh, meeting where uh, Troyer group will go over the process and uh, the community survey uh, with this group and get some feedback. And, and this is really our sounding board group. Um, and you can all look forward to an invitation to meet with Troyer group uh, in August, early September. Um, we'll be getting the word out um, to the community about the parks master plan process because uh, we're going to start to really go forward here pretty quickly here in the next the second half of the year already um, for our parks master plan setting the direction for the department for the next five years so looking forward to that work and engaging the community in um, either by having them fill out a survey or be part of a public meeting all via zoom getting creative um, or being part of a stakeholder group and then Troyer group will also be doing some pop-up um, intake opportunities at some of our concerts and that again just uh, trying to engage our community to getting feedback and hearing um, what they'd like to see parks do in the next uh, five years. And then my only other reminder is our next meeting is uh, Tuesday, August 18th. Um, as far as we know, it will still be in this format. Kim and I will keep you posted on that. And um, I will be presenting my 20, the department's 2021 general fund budget um, at that meeting. That will be the first agenda item. Um, and then we'll have a few other agenda items, but that will be the main focus for that meeting. That is all. I just again want to commend um, our staff for doing a really good job um, keeping up with all the COVID precautions and uh, updating our yard signs and uh, continuing, as Krista referenced, uh, making some really good, uh, taking some really good measures and being creative in how to keep our community safe, yet um, allowing our community to enjoy the outdoors and breathe some fresh air and get some exercise and mental health relief as well. So. Uh, they're just doing an outstanding job and I just like to acknowledge them and let you know that uh, everyone appreciates the work they're doing. Here, here, good, well, well said, Paula. Definitely necessary now, so. All Kathleen, right. yes. can I uh, a point of a personal uh, <clears throat> privilege? Uh, I haven't had a chance to welcome Ellen Coe to the board mm -hmm. uh, and I do so with a great deal of pleasure I think you're going to be a great, strong board member. You've joined a, a group that has the great privilege to work with a superior, super good uh, parks department and staff, a uh, community that values quality of life and, and believes that parks brings a great deal to that equation. Uh, so welcome. You're going to enjoy this one. This is one of the best volunteer jobs in the city. <laughs> Thanks so much, Les. I'm very excited to be here, so. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, we will adjourn uh, this July meeting of the Bloomington Board of Park Commissioners. And we'll, we'll see you on our screens again in August. <laughs>